final short section, I would just like to discuss a little bit about system in package. So as SOC or system on chip versus system in package, what's the difference? An SOC or a system on chip is the integration of several IPs on a, on a single silicon substrate. So if we take a, a, a core and some accelerators or some sort of, uh, some sort of different uh, types of protocol and, and so forth and put it on one chip, that's called a system on chip. System in package, on the other hand, or SIP, is where we take several chips, several di separate silicon devices, and we put them all in one single package. So in the example over here, you can see there's this one die, and there are these other dies all around it. And this first die is in, like, for example, in 7 nanometer or 16 nanometer, and the other ones could be in, like, an older technology. Uh, in this case, not that much older, but a 16 nanometer technology. So why use system in package? Well, there are some clearly obvious uh, understandings. If if we take a chip and we make it really, really big, it, we know that our yield goes up, uh, really, uh, our yield goes way down, actually, to the fourth, right? Uh, something like that. Um, and so what we can see is the size of uh, the chip, the, the yield goes down. When we use a system on package, we can make much smaller dies, and then we can use much get much higher yield for our uh, each and every single chip. Okay. Second of all, we can mix several process nodes. So in our example here, again, we could have made our logic die with a seven nanometer process to get the highest speed, but maybe our IOs could have been with a, an older process and then they could be cheaper. Or uh, we could use like a, an older technology for analog, such as a more than more type of, a type of approach or so forth. Um, we can also have close integration with non-CMOS devices in that way. Like we can put flash or silicon photonics or silicon germanium or high bandwidth memory, which we'll show at the end of this uh, lecture. So the original approach to this was called MCM or multi-chip module and it's it's uh, something that's very popular still today but it's been around for a while. Okay? That that is to actually assemble several silicon devices on one organic substrate. Okay? So uh, what we do here is we have kind of uh, two options. We can either take uh, this substrate which is like a small package again and we can have two chips that are both bonded to the same substrate and then package them together okay what it means is that we just get really really short wires and really close wires and we can do some routing in between them on this substrate and we don't have to go through the larger sizes of uh, the chip we can also just put these two chips on top of each other and do the bonds maybe possibly even shorter connections to each other um, here we have a routing pitch of about 30 microns and a bump pitch uh, of about 160 microns. And you can here see an example of an AMD um, ATI Radon, which has a, a bunch of these um, chips that are all in the same package. This would be uh, the graphic processor, and these are probably DRAM modules. Um, the more... Um, Mature, the more uh, uh, new way of doing this and the better way is what's called a silicon interposer. Okay, in this case, we take several silicon devices and put it, them all on uh, a passive silicon carrier. It's basically we're fabricating a package. Okay, so the substrate is a chip. We have uh, this silicon interposer. It's a chip. That what it has inside it, it has these different routing tracks that enable us to route from chip to chip. And the silicon carrier um, is assembled on some sort of an organic substrate. And we use TSVs through silicon vias that help us connect between the different chips and the substrate. Okay, so here we can see a picture of this type of a thing. We have a wafer, right? Um, and we take, um, in the wafer, we take the silicon interposer is what's actually made on this wafer and then we stick these chips that have been prefabricated onto it and we bond them with these micro micro bumps which are similar to regular bumps on a flip chip and they stick onto the thing and then we can dice the wafer up and we get our system in package over there i mean we get our our, our uh, multiple dies that are already connected to get to each other and then we can package them so this provides us with much more dense bonding than we had with the MCM. We can get a routing pitch of about one micron um, using a, a 65 nanometer um, interposer. 
Um, of course, the, the 65 nanometer interposer is cheap, much cheaper than like a 7 nanometer or a 16 nanometer chip. Okay, we can get these micro bumps that they'll be about 40 microns uh, pitch, which is really, really small. Okay, um, we can use regular standard silicon manufacturing equipment. Um, we have a limit on the size of our reticles. Um, so TSMC provides this uh, um, technology called COOS where you can see what they can do with it. You can look on their website to see how it's done. Other companies also provide it too. It's a relatively new technology, and uh, so it's a lot more expensive, but it's been in early production since 2011, and it's much simpler than um, 3D technology where you actually take two chips and just use these uh, uh, different types of TSVs and so forth and try to put them on each other. Um, the heat removal and power delivery are almost the same as in MCM. So that's really, uh, uh, it's really what's done on high-end chips nowadays. HBM or high bandwidth memory is probably the main application that's already being used today. So memory is obviously the the big uh, the big uh, wall and the big bottleneck for for high uh, performance systems. <coughs> and especially things like GPUs, they need tons and tons of memory or networking chips and so forth need a ton of memory. So high bandwidth memory is this uh, standard. It's one of a bunch of standards that have come out. Um, that, uh, how you connect an SOC to DRAMs. And you can see here um, that we put our SOC over here. And then through this silicon interposer, we put a stack of uh, 3D connected DRAM slices that are on top of each other and we can get really high performance. You can see here um, there are two cores of uh, memory, four cores of memory, eight cores of memory. Um, and there are different configurations here that show you how you get these really, really high bandwidths to go to um, uh, the DDR of the chip. So um, with that, I finish uh, my discussion of IOs, and I really want to thank Ido Burstein from Mellanox, who um, provided a lot of the, uh, the background slides for the final system in packaging. Uh,